Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Ann Licker Acres. I'm Sarah. And right now what I'm gonna do is I am going to make some yogurt or at least get it started. I picked up, or I, I'm a friend of mine found a local lady that um, raises goats and has goat milk. So I've been looking for that for quite a while and was very excited to be able to find that local resource. So what I did was I purchased um, eight quarts of goat's milk from her and I'm going to take four of those and turn those into yogurt. I had done this a few days ago, well right after I had purchased it. Um, I went ahead and tried that to see if it would come out right um, and something that we would enjoy here because I eat a lot of yogurt with granola and my fruit, things like that and it was really good, but I ate it really fast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some more and kinda show you how I do that. Cause it's very simple. Um, <clears throat> I'm assuming that it would be the same if you have a cow and um, you wanted to make um, yogurt from your cow's milk. Um, what you basically need is you need your raw milk and I'm gonna heat that to 180 um, just because it is raw. And um, once it's at 180, I'm gonna take it off of the heat, I'm gonna let it come back down to around 100 and 150 to 115 degrees. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna empty these into my pan and get those going. And um, what you'll also need is you'll need a starter. Now you can buy a yogurt starter or you can just buy, um, if you have any left over, which I do of yogurt that I purchased from Azure Standard, and it is actually an A2, A2 organic cow's milk, um, but this is what I have. It's a whole milk and it has, it has live cultures in it, and that's what you wanna make sure of if you go to the store and purchase a already made yogurt as your starter. Make sure that you read the label and it says that it is a live culture yogurt and that um, it is within the expiration date. So I'm going to get that going right now and um, get that up to temperature. Oh, it's so rich and creamy. It just, it's beautiful milk. Absolutely beautiful milk. Very creamy on top. And if you drink it raw, it, oh, it was so good. And I, I just love it. Even if I just want plain granola and milk, it works great for that. It's just delicious. Um, I have difficulty processing. My body has difficulty processing dairy. So I have found that um, goat's milk works really well um, and I can tolerate it um, because it is a little bit harder to get the A2, A2 um, cow's milk. Um, it's a bit expensive, definitely worth it if you can find it. Um, again, Azure Standard carries it, but it is expensive. Um, and this way, the A2A2 is, um, it does not have those enzymes in it that, have, that um, irritate the gut if you are lactose intolerant. So um, just, you know, that's just a little quickie. Um, but goat's milk, on the other hand, does not have those, so um, it's easier on the gut if you are lactose intolerant. So I've got my four quarts in here, and I'm going to bring it up to 180 degrees, um, and then pull it off, and once it gets to um, between 100 and 115 degrees, I'll show you how we're going to go about that then, and um, get it into jars so we can get it turned into yogurt. So stay tuned. All right, my um, milk is now up to temperature. It's up to 180 degrees. So I went ahead and turned the heat off and I moved it off um, onto a different burner. So it will now cool until, um, I'm gonna wait until it gets to 115 and then I'll put my culture in. I don't wanna put my culture in, my yogurt starter culture in now because it, all it'll do is it'll just kill everything. So it won't then um, make yogurt. So I'm gonna wait until it gets to 115 and then put that in, get it transferred into my jars, and then I'll show you how I'm gonna use my dehydrator to keep it at 110 degrees 
for about eight to 10 hours um, and so that it sets and, and begins to form the yogurt. Um, we want those cultures to ferment and um, to really do their work. Um, so I think I will be able to get all of these jars filled and put um, them onto my dehydrator. In the meantime, um, I'm going to work on these peppers. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the majority of them chopped up, diced up. Um, I'm just gonna use my chopper um, and then put them into some um, quart sized jar or bags so that I can put them into the freezer. Then that way I can just pull them out as I need them. Um, I'll probably do some that are sliced um, so that I can use them in like fajitas or um, other taco type style foods. Um, but right now I'm just gonna get as many as I can chopped up because I need to get out to the garden again and I've got four more plants that are still out there, the orange and the reds. These are mostly yellow that are ready to be harvested. And then I also have my um, Ajvarsky peppers, my red roasting peppers. There's quite a few out there too that I need to get processed, bring them in and get them processed and in the freezer. So I'm gonna work on that while this is coming um, down in temperature. And then I'll show you what I'm gonna do with the yogurt. Well, I got, um, a good portion of the peppers done. These I'm gonna turn into slices. What I did was I did everything in my chopper, just coarse cut it up, quartered it, put it in, chopped it up. Now I'm gonna bag these two cups um, per quart bag and then put them in the freezer. My milk is almost down to the temperature that I need. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna slice these um, and get these in bags for um, the freezer as well. And um, I am going to link the yogurt recipe and another recipe that I love using peppers in. Um, it's a um, Mexican dish that we like to do. Um, I will have those on my blog site, so you can go over and check that out if you'd like to um, get the recipes. And um, it's at annlickeracres.com, and um, you can then go ahead and pull those off, read the blog, um, and I'll kind of walk through how we did the yogurt as well. All right, well, it's up to, it's down to the temperature that I need, it's at 115. I'm gonna go ahead and for every quart that I heated up in here, I'm gonna put two tablespoons of my um, already purchased yogurt as the culture. So I'm just gonna add it right into the pot, stir it, and then I'll ladle it into my jars and get it into my dehydrator. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that this um, already purchased yogurt or starter, whatever starter you decide to use, um, that we get that all mixed in. Um, so there's one, two quarts, three quarts, and four quarts. So we're just gonna stir that. Um, to make sure it all gets blended because it is thick um, and we don't want it to just clump at the bottom. So I'm gonna stir this a bit and then I'm gonna ladle it into my jars. And then what we want to do is we want to make sure that this stays around 110 degrees, like I said earlier, um, as it is fermenting for, I'm gonna check it within about eight to 10 hours and see how it's doing. Um, so it's already starting to culture a bit because of the heat. So now I'm just gonna ladle it into my jars. And I'm gonna use um, smaller jars um, because I'm the only one that usually eats this. Um, and I, it, I can eat that within a couple of days because um, I eat that for breakfast or I put it in my smoothies. So I'm just gonna um, get that in here. Do that to each of my jars. I've got five jars here. And you wanna leave about two inches of head space in the jar. Get that out of there. And then we're gonna put lids on them before we put them into the dehydrator, set them alongside of my dehydrator. Now, um, they make yogurt machines. Um, you can do this, from what I understand, you can do this in the oven, 
if your oven goes low enough in temperature, mine does not, it only goes to 170. Um, if you have a strong enough bulb, light bulb, inside your oven, you can leave it set in um, a bowl of water, put your jar inside the bowl of water to keep that warm, and set it back by that light bulb um, for about eight to 10 hours, look at it, and some people leave it for even up to 20 hours until it starts to set. Once it sets, then we'll strain it. Oh, I need my funnel. And um, I'm going to, the, how I'll, well, it depends. I take that back. The last batch I made, I did strain, um, so I got quite a bit away off of it, and um, which I'll use in another way. Uh, <laughs> didn't mean it that way. <laughs> Anyhow, I will use that in a different situation. Um, these, however, I, I think I'm just gonna leave and let them set. I don't know that I'm gonna strain them. Um, I shouldn't have to. So, um, I've not done it with my using my dehydrator before, so I don't know exactly how long it's gonna take, but we'll just keep an eye on it and we'll experiment. So it looks like I'm gonna need some more jars for these. Um, so I'll have to get some and fill it up because this is making quite a bit. Which is what I wanted. more big jar here then I'll have to go get some more now I don't know if you've ever had goat's milk yogurt before it is thinner than your Greek yogurt that you would buy at the store um, that is made with cow's milk um, but it is just as good in my opinion I um, I almost prefer it um, it is still tangy like a Greek yogurt, but it's just got a nice uh, light flavor to it. It's not anything that seems heavy or anything like that. All right, so I'm gonna need, that was half of what I made. So I'm gonna have to go and get some more jars and keep ladling it. Once I get them all done, I'll get them set in the dehydrator and show you how I'm gonna do that. All right, so I got all of my jars filled um, I've got two that I'm going to have to do in the oven because I don't have enough space here. Um, so what I'm doing is I am, I turn my oven on to the lowest temperature. Now it's hotter than what it should be. Um, it's 170, but once it comes up to that temperature, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to crack the door for maybe three, four minutes, let some of that heat out. And then I have a dish, show you here, I have a dish here that I filled, I put the two that I uh, didn't have room for in the dehydrator, I put it in my dish and filled it with some warm water, warm tap water. And that's what I'll put into the oven then and um, put it as close to the light bulb as I can so that it stays warm. Now what I'm gonna do with this is I've got these set around the actual vent where the air comes out. I don't want them to cook. So I have different temperatures on this dehydrator. And I'm now I've never done this before. So I'm, I'm assuming that it's gonna work because it's gonna keep it to the 110. So I'm just going to turn this on. I'm gonna leave it in between, I've got 95 and 104, and then it goes to 113 to 123. I'm gonna put it right in the middle and um, then just keep checking it. And then what I'm gonna do, because my lid doesn't fit over this, um, cause it, it's a tray, dehydrator, I'm going to take a towel and I'm just going to drape it over there. It's just one of my bread towels, so it's a little bit lighter. It's It'll help hold that heat in um, so it gets all around it. And then I'm just going to set it off to the side and I'm just going to let it do its thing for, um, like I said, eight hours. And then I'm going to check it and see if I need to do something else or see if I really did all. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the um, other two into the oven here in a few minutes. And then I'm gonna keep working on, I've got a few more peppers and onions that I need to get done. And then I'm gonna head out to the garden and see what I can harvest out there. So I got all of my yogurt going and I was going through my um, deep freeze 
and seeing what I need to kind of clean up, process, reorganize. And I found that I had three pounds of cranberries that I had purchased from Azure Standard and I haven't used them yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make a cranberry juice. And what I'm gonna do is the recipe I'm gonna follow, it's two and a half pounds of cranberries to eight cups of water and then you could add sugar if you want to. So since I have three pounds, I did 10 cups of water. I'm gonna add these in. You're gonna bring it to a boil until, it, it the it direction said about five minutes until really the cranberries start to burst open. And I will then um, kind of stir it around. Um, I probably won't add the sugar until after I have strained these out. Um, and then I can check it and see how sweet I want it, if I want it sweet at all. I personally like the um, really tart type of cranberry juice, but um, I don't want to be the only one that can drink this. I know my husband, he would drink it if it was a little bit sweeter. So I'll do that after I strain it. So right now I'm just going to get these in. I already put the water in um, and I just used filtered water um, from our tap. We've got a filter on it. Um, and they're frozen, so it might take a little bit longer. Um, you could certainly use fresh ones. So I'm just going to kind of stir this so they get down in there. I really like buying my frozen fruits um, from Azure because it's really good quality and I can buy it in bulk if I want to, or I can buy individual packages. So it's a really nice deal, um, I feel, for us. I'm gonna put a lid on this just so that um, it'll come up to a boil a little bit faster. And then once it's done, um, I'll show you how I'm gonna strain it, sweeten it, and then I've got some old juice jars that I'm gonna use, um, bottle it up, and then see if I can't get them preserved um, and put into the pantry. So um, I will keep you updated as soon as this comes up to a boil and done, and we'll come back. All right, so I have gotten my cranberries. Um, they have all now broken down. I did come in with an immersion blender and um, hit it with that a little bit to kind of break it up. Um, what I decided I wanted to do is I will have juice from this that I'm going to be able to drink um, like I was sharing with you. But I think what I'm gonna do is, um, it made a really nice pulp. Um, so I'm going to take this leftover after it's strained and I'll make a jam out of it. Um, I think that will be really good. I'm not gonna be able to do that until tomorrow because my, I don't pick my um, Azure order up until tomorrow and I am out of sugar until then. The sweetener that I'm going to use for the juice is, um, let's see, this is another one that I got from Azure. Um, it's a sweetener. Um, it's not sugar. It's, um, yeah, it, and it's just in a powder form, and it's it's an equal ratio, so it's like a one-to-one -one, um, for sugar. So I think I'm just going to use this because I don't want to sweeten it too much, um, and I don't have a whole lot of juice. So I can use this up, but for the jam, I'm gonna need quite a bit of sugar, so I'll wait until tomorrow. So I'll just put that in the fridge um, until then, and it, it'll keep just fine. So I'm just straining this, making a mess, <laughs> but I'm just straining this off into um, my eight cup um, mixing container and then just kind of working it through so I get all the juice out. It's such a beautiful color. It's gonna be really good. Um, so I'll just keep doing this until it's all gone. I'm not quite sure how much I'm gonna get. I should probably get maybe a little over eight cups. I don't know. I mean, um, usually I get less than the water I put in um, just cause it kind of cooks down a bit, evaporates. But I'm just kind of pushing that through and you can see it's straining there. It's a really nice, sweet, rich color and it smells wonderful. So this is gonna be really good. Um, 
I'll have to order some more cranberries next month so I can get some more of this. Uh, I really, I really like cranberries, um, not just to drink, but I, I like the jam. Um, I'm not a big fan of it on turkey, you know, you get the cranberry sauce, um, even if it's homemade. My brother-in-law makes a very, very good um, cranberry sauce. Um, he does it every year and he does it fresh. Um, it, it just, to me, that combination, I know it should go together. That's, it just does it in my palate. So I'm not real wild about it, but I do like it on some chicken. Um, I like it on pork. So, um, and not just jam, um, but like mushed up cranberries like this. So that's pretty much what I'm gonna get out of this one. I'm gonna keep straining it. Um, the last of this and then get the juice canned and processed today and like I said I'll wait until tomorrow and do the, the jam um, yeah so I'm just gonna keep it in a bowl and keep going hey good morning everybody so I didn't finish the last video about the yogurt making and my um, cranberry jam um, I ran out of time and I didn't get it um, videoed. So I wanna show you now, we're a couple days later and the yogurt turned out beautiful. So um, what I ended up having to do though is I had to take the two yogurts that I had in my oven, I took them out and I then just set them around the dehydrator and covered all of them. Um, after I checked them, after about 10 hours, they still weren't quite where I wanted them, so I went ahead and left them overnight. Um, I checked, I think the total time I did was, it was probably closer to 20 hours, because um, it was early afternoon when I finally checked them. And I didn't have to strain them, and I wanna show you how they turned out. Now this one, I already opened because I had some for breakfast, and it was really good. I had it with my granola. Now, like I said, um, Goat's milk yogurt is a little thinner, um, well, probably quite a bit thinner than cow's milk, but it is just as good. So here it is, and that's how thin it is. But I'll tell you what, it hangs on to your fruit and your granola really well, and it tastes just like Greek yogurt. I am so happy all of the jars turned out well. So now I have yogurt for at least a um, couple of weeks which is um, about right, and then I'll go and I'll get some more milk and I'll make some more. So I'm going to, um, I'll go ahead and link the, like I said, link the um, recipe and directions, and um, I'll link it both here, but I'll, I'll probably shoot you over to my blog site because it'll be a little bit easier for you to read through, and then if you want to, um, you know, screenshot it or whatever, you can have that. So anyway, um, I'm gonna now get my cranberry, my cranberry um, jam started. I got my um, sugar, so we're all set. I'm gonna do, um, let's see, I ended up with probably a good six, I would say this is between six and eight cups of um, cranberry pulp. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get this on the heat um, and I'm going to add sugar to it, my cane sugar, cause I did get that in. And then um, I'll add some lemon juice, a little bit of lemon juice to kind of help with the acidity level. And then I can get those once they're hot, I can get them in my jars and get them processing. Cause I've got a lot to get done this morning before um, this afternoon I want to um, do some other projects. So I wanna get all of this kitchen work done this morning, but I wanted to show you this. So, um, and the yogurt. So I was very, very pleased with the yogurt. I hope you try it and I hope you like it. Check out my blog site. You can get the recipe and the directions on how to do that. So I'm gonna get this started and I'll show you when we're just about ready um, to get those uh, canned up and show you how I do that. Okay, so I've got my um, cranberries, they're boiling. What I did, I went ahead and added some water to it because it was pretty thick. Um, so I probably added maybe a cup, cup and a half of water to it. Now I'm gonna hit it with the immersion blender, see if I can't get it a little bit smoother before I add the sugar, or before I add actually the pectin, um, and then I'll add the sugar once the pectin is all um, incorporated in. You definitely do not want to add the sugar first, otherwise the pectin won't work. 
um, it won't incorporate in as it should and you won't get the right kind of consistency for your jams and jellies. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with an immersion blender and then we'll do the next steps. I, you know, I never thought I would use an immersion blender as much as I do in the canning season. This is wonderful for any kind of, um, if once you've cooked something down like your fruits or your vegetables um, and then to be able to kind of get it to a consistency that is not chopped um, and it's quick um, it's more of a puree so I've really been happy with it and this one is just a very, very simple immersion blender that I got I think I got it at Walmart <laughs> otherwise it will make a mess it'll splatter all over so I'm going to add the pectin next make sure I incorporate that in um, really well because I want it all to dissolve properly so there's no chunks of gelatin like ouch, in it so for this recipe um, I did eight cups between the um, cranberry puree and the water that I put in. And I'm doing one pack of uh, the pectin. It's a sure gel, I believe is what it is. Um, I'm not sure where I picked it up at. You can get them at your local grocery stores, the big box stores, anywhere that has canning supplies. Um, so I just wanna make sure that's all incorporated in looks like it is. And now I'm going to add my um, four cups of sugar. It's real nice, smooth, and velvety. And I'm going to make sure that this is all incorporated in as well and dissolved. You know, it's, it seems like a lot of sugar, and it is, I suppose. Um, however, um, one, these cranberries are pretty tart. And, you know, I heard um, one lady say, you know, you gotta take into consideration that you're not eating a whole bowl of this at one time. So the amount of sugar is really not that um, big of a deal, at least not for our family. And, and she was um, commenting the same way because you're only eating maybe a tablespoon or two on toast or something like that. So otherwise, I would be a little bit more hesitant about using so much sugar in something. Um, so this, um, I'm okay with. Now this has really turned out beautiful. It's nice and shiny. Um, I, it feels like all of the sugar is dissolved. So I'll show you what this looks like. <laughs> So you can see here, as that cools, that will set up into a nice jam. So what I'll do now is I will start filling my jars. Get you set back up here. I'll fill my jars and get those ready to process because they will water bath, um, process, and I'm going to use these jars. I don't know that I'll be able to fill all four, but I would love to. Um, and then once we get, I think I'll probably do some tomatoes also um, so that I can water bath them all at the same time instead of heating up the kitchen, cooling it down, heating it up again. And we'll just try and do everything at one time. So I will be back with you and show you when we're ready to do that. So I've got, I ended up having to get two, two more jars. And um, so it made quite a bit and it tastes really good. So I'm just cleaning off the rims because I don't want any um, sugar or anything sticky on there because um, I want them to be able to have a good seal when I process them. So I've got a clean wet rag and I'm just coming around the edges and wiping those off. Like that. 
put the lids on them, and then um, I'll be able to put them in the water bath canner. So um, actually, now that I added more jars, I'll be able to do this in just one batch. So I'll get that started.